Well, first of all, sorry for that. A uh, little bit of confusion, but we just had uh, two presentations talking a little bit about CK and everything, and I'm gonna bring a little bit of optimistic roll-ups here for you, and tell tell you a little bit about how our how our own VM works, right? The Cartesi virtual machine, which is a pretty different approach from everything I've seen so far, and how it works in tandem with our roll-ups framework, and the dev journey behind all of that, right? So talking a little bit just to, for you to have a, an idea of what's happening in this presentation here. Um, yeah, Cartesi Machine, it's a RISC-V based VM running Linux. You can build any dApp with any language you want on it. And it hurts all, it hurts all the toolings from Web2 and all the security guarantees from its base layer. It, it has a very cool tooling that we've been polishing recently called Cartesi CLI, where, which you can use to build, run, and debug your projects. Um, our own explorer for your app chains, which is pretty different. And it's easy to deploy with Cartesi Deploy. So before anything, uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about the execution environment, right? What's an execution environment? It's as simple as getting an input, processing whatever you told it to do, and getting an output to out, out of that. Um, but it does have some more complications when you're picking your execution environment for your application. Like, what are the things that you need most? Is it actually speed? Is it actually computing power? Is it more security? Is uh, low latency? Are you willing to have high latency outside of the depth scope, you know, all of that is taken into account. Uh, our approach is to get the Ethereum virtual machine and make it faster and make it stronger. But we're not building on top of the Ethereum virtual machine because it doesn't provide all that we need, right? It has its good functions. It do does what it settles to do, what it's the basic, the, all the basic of Ethereum, but we need something more powerful because our initial thought was, hey, what if we could learn to run AI models on blockchain or what if we could run actual complex games and verify them with blockchain? So we needed something stronger and we needed something more reliable and more flexible. That's why we built the Cartesi machine. And I like this comparison because if you take, for example, the amount of instructions that the EVM can hold, like in a block, you have space for, I think, if you're taking on Ethereum, the basic standard block, you can do something around of to 10 million add instructions, right? And that's being pretty generous with Ethereum as a layer one. And in Linux, in about the same time that you complete a block, 13 seconds, you can do something around in a regular computer to 30 to 3 billion instructions, which is pretty scary when you consider the difference that a million seconds is to a billion seconds or any other comparison of those. I don't know if you've seen those, but a million seconds turns out to be 12 days and a billion seconds, 32 years. So it's a huge difference right there, right? So what is the Cartesi machine? What is this thing that I'm talking about that is so powerful, so flexible and how it works, okay? We took RISC-V, we put Linux onto it, we made it deterministic, and we started running it off-chain. So you can basically run any computation from a specific node, and it's runnable in a ver and it's run in a verifiable way, in a verifiable manner. That means everything can be checked. So we did this implementation, whoops, sorry. So we did this implementation to have all the capability and all the power that developers are used to, that users are used to, and still having all the underlying security of the blockchain. I'm gonna explain later a little bit of how it works, but it does bring some advantages having Linux and running your applications on Linux, right? For example, the EVM tooling is pretty great. You can do a lot with a player. Picture like, you can actually screw things with this, you can actually pull things with this, you can even hammer things with this, but it's not the best way to do it, right? We've been working years and years to create better tooling and more flexible tools that are very specifically used to do some things. 
So the Cartesi tooling, when you're bringing the Linux environment and all the languages are used, you're used to, you're bringing all the tooling you're used to. So on the Cartesi machine, you can basically run OpenCV, you can learn scikit-learn, you can run sqlite, redis, and you can code in whatever language you want, really, because everything runs there. So you can do Python, you can do JS, and Go is always trying to run. Gopher really doesn't like this, but come back here, man. Please, don't go away. Rust is here, all right? Yeah, yeah. No, I thought you liked Rust, man. Okay, please, come on. So how does the architecture and how does all that process work, right? Well, simply we get a layer one, we do a transaction for it, and the Cartesian machine that's running off-chain with as many validators and as you want that can verify each other, gets the input that is written on our own framework that's there. So we have a smart contract called input box. It reads the input from there, process anything, and it settles again on the layer one. And the user can read its outputs just reading the states of the machine, which is pretty awesome. But we like a more modular approach as well. So picture if you're using Expresso as a DA, for example, you can actually send a transaction to Expresso. It sends the input to the Cartesian machine and a block commitment to the layer one. And then Cartesian can settle on Ethereum. This way you can build totally modularized and that's pretty cool. And the user for him, it gets the input state in the same, the output state in the same way, right? So when we build it, we actually found out that there were lots of things missing. As soon as we re released the Cartesian machine, we still needed much more because, hey, developers are used to having it easy these days, right? Gone are the days where we were scavenging and fighting for little bytes in the memory. So the problems now that devs face in Web2 at least would be more related to the basic stuff, which kind of got more complex. So even how you create and build and run and debug and deploy your applications do need to be a good experience for the developer. Otherwise, he's just going somewhere else, okay? So we created this Cartesi CLI, which helps you to bootstrap uh, projects really quick with an easy command uh, saying like Cartesi create, and you just create your project, Cartesi build, you build it, Cartesi run, you run it. Uh, we have the, a debugging tool as well. So, and after all of that, we can just deploy, saying Cartesi deploy. And this is a really fun thing because we got also used to deploying things in a wheezy way. And for Ethereum, it's pretty straightforward right now. But if we're using an outside EVM and this kind of architecture that I'm showing here, it's kind of complicated because you're running a node of chain, right? So how are you running that node? How are you incentivizing people to run that node? How you're actually executing something off chain, you need a server for that. So you need an easy way to deploy as well. That's what Sunodo deploy or Cartesi CLI deploy is supposed to do. We are actually wrapping a machine, sending it to IPFS where you can just get a copy of it and spin up your own validator node easy. One thing else, uh, as I said, we do have our validators nodes running out of chain, off chain. So we kinda also need to be able to inspect its transactions, right? So we did create the Cartesi Explorer, which is uh, an app-specific app explorer. And that means we are able to see the transactions that go to that specific app and not in the whole layer one where it's running on top of, which is pretty cool. So what's being run with, uh, built with it, I like to show you these two examples that are really cool. The first one is actually running an AI model there. We, uh, we had these contributors building the alpaca, building the alpaca language, large language model on Cartesi, and you just, we just had to cross compile it. So the RISC-V architecture would accept it. And all the inputs plus model generation can be verified and get the same output, which is pretty cool. Uh, something else that happened that was pretty nice and a very good uh, test of what Cartesi is capable of was some guys posting on Twitter, hey, if Ethereum is the word computer, how come no one managed to run Doom on it yet? Because we all know that Doom runs everywhere, right? Doom runs on Minecraft, Doom runs on Notepad++, so how come it doesn't run in the blockchain? Well, 
we have a really crazy guy called Eduardo who actually managed to do this. He built, uh, he put Dune on the browser where you can actually play it, verify your gameplay in validator nodes. And this is like completely game changing for uh, speed running or things like that because you can totally verify people play through. And we do have a whole horizon of other applications, right? Uh, just to name a few, we do have DCA Monster, where you can actually run algorithms for dollar cost averaging on chain in a verifiable way. We do have other large languages model, models that were built on top of uh, after uh, the, the Llama one. So we do have specific ones like uh, Cartesi GPT, which is pretty much helping you to build for Cartesi in a large language model on the blockchain, which is pretty meta and pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, like protocol GPT that helps in every other like protocol with, we fit as many information as we can and we can just run like that. We j did have a masterclass recently where we got some really cool things that are being built right now, such as uh, social media with the recommendation algorithm being run in sidechain, so in a verifiable manner, which is pretty cool as well. And last but not least, Nebula Duo, which is a zero player game that's completely run off chain kind of based on Pokemon, where you get a team of Pokemon and you settle them and let them battle with each other. I love that. I'm really looking forward for that to come to mainnet and it's just being built right now, which is awesome. So we have all this horizon of things being built and yeah, just wanted to talk to about them a little bit. So that was it. Thank you for watching. Join our Discord if you have any questions. You can do them now or later.